Hi, this is Craig, and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. This is the average tech fan edition of Cruising Off Duty, because I have some exciting, exciting news. If you know the channel, you know that I spend a lot of my time flying my drone to get the cinematic shots of our boat in the Thousand Islands or when across the Atlantic Ocean. I also filmed with this drone as we were sailing with a full spinnaker. A little bit scary trying to get this back on a moving boat, but I did it. And this drone, I love this drone, and I've had it for two years. I had it from, I pre-ordered it, so I've had it since sometime in 2016. And it's been an amazing drone, and I still love it to this day. And that's why I was reluctant to upgrade this, because it does everything I need it to do. So, even though I know a lot of people on YouTube have had this drone for a couple of weeks at least, I finally splurged and got the Mavic 2 Pro. And there's so many features on this that are going to blow away my existing Mavic Pro that I felt like I had to have it. I not only got that, but then of course I broke the bank even more by getting the Fly More package, which gives you two extra batteries, two extra pairs of props, a leather bag to carry it in, extra charger, a kind of a quad charger. We'll get into that in a second. But the exciting news is the Mavic 2 Pro and why it's so much better than my loved Mavic Pro, which I haven't even opened. It's still in the shiny plastic. Oh, can't wait to open it. Anyways, this is gonna be my new drone and I'll compare it to the features of my existing drone. So you can now still buy these on the market. They're still selling at $9.99. You can probably pick them up used because people like me that buy something like this will probably put things like this on Craigslist or Kijiji um, because we don't probably need two drones. But we'll go through, if this drone is good enough for you, go for it because it does an amazing job. It's just this new one has a much better camera. It's got optical avoidance on all sides omnidirectional they call it it's got better object tracking which means as you're running or doing anything the drone will follow you and track you it's just amazing the features that this drone has i kind of wish i didn't know all the features i held off looking long enough because i didn't want to spend the money but i did it so anyways i will compare and contrast the benefits of just the mavic pro which you can probably get pretty cheap now or the mavic 2 pro all coming up after this all right, the first thing is the quick unboxing. I know unboxings can be, I find them kind of boring, but you know, when you got a brand new drone that costs you almost $1,449 US, you know, you want to get that new drone smell. So with you watching, I'm going to unpack this. They don't make it very obvious how to open it, but I finally figured out you slide the sleeve off. And here we go. On your mark, get set. Ta-da! There you go, that's my full extent of unboxing because I hate them and I find them extremely boring. Hopefully you do too because I'm not gonna show you any more than that. What I'm gonna do is break down in two columns the difference between the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic Pro and then I'm gonna show you some footage of not only the 4K cinematic quality of this new Hasselblad one inch camera versus the old camera and also some object tracking that's pretty impressive. So let's get on to that. First, let's just break down the components part by part and what's better with the new drone. When I start dropping down these columns, you're gonna see every feature is better on this new Mavic 2 Pro, but one thing nobody seems to be talking about on YouTube is how much quicker it boots up. I'm gonna press both buttons simultaneously and you check it out which one's faster. See, the Mavic 2 is done and the Mavic 1 is still spinning and spinning and turning and spinning. I know it's only a couple of seconds, but it's something to note. Also, I wanted to say how much quicker the Mavic 2 Pro got up in the air to a height of about 200 feet, then flew over to this pond, filmed, and flew back. Amazingly fast compared to the Mavic 1. Anyways, let's get on to the list. The main reason to upgrade from a Mavic Pro or from the Mavic 2 Zoom is the Hasselblad camera. That was the reason I decided to splurge and get this new drone. Now let's go through the specs and you'll probably clearly see that this new Hasselblad camera should blow the old DJI camera right out of the water. The new camera shoots 20 megapixel stills and the old camera shoots 12, so if you're the type of person that flies a drone to shoot still photography, this is definitely a step up. When it comes to sensor size, the new Hasselblad camera is a 1 inch sensor and the other one is a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor, so it's more than twice the size. What you're going to get from that is you're going to be able to shoot videos in low light with way, way better results. Now, if you're the type of person that likes to shoot slow motion, this drone is definitely a step up again. 120 frames per second at 1080p, and the old drone was at 96 frames per second, so the ultra slow-mo should be silky smooth. Here's a stat that most of us are disappointed in. It shoots 4K at 30 frames per second, just like the last drone. Meanwhile, the Phantom 4 Pro has a 1-inch sensor as well and shoots 4K at 60 frames per second. Well, why would they do that? 
Well, my gut feeling is they didn't want to cannibalize the sales of their Phantom 4 series by bringing out a drone that beats the Phantom 4 in every way. So they deliberately governed this camera to only shoot at 30 frames per second just so there's a sales feature for buying the Phantom 4. At least that's my gut feeling. The new camera shoots at 100 megabits per second and the old camera's at 60. So what this really gives you is better dynamic range, better colors, should, should just be a better image. We shall see. Now here's the biggest feature that excites me about this camera. This Hasselblad camera is like a professional camera on a drone. You now have the ability, like most DSLRs, to change your aperture to match the conditions. For example, if it's dark out, or if you want a shallow depth of field, you keep your aperture as wide open to let as much light into the sensor as possible, and that would be an f at 2.8. If it's super sunny, and you're trying to keep your shutter speed reasonable to be close to that 180 degree rule, then you have your, the ability to dial it all the way down to f11, which is a tiny little hole at the front of your camera to let in the least amount of light possible. There you go, so that is a super huge feature that any good videographer would know is something they want in their camera. The old one was stuck at f2.4 all the time. So if you had a super sunny day, what would happen is it would be blown out, way overexposed, or you'd have to go get ND filters, or you'd have to dial up your shutter speed to be so short so so little light gets in. But when you do that, you end up having a slightly crappier image. It's a little more jittery. It's just not as professional looking. So there you go, a professional camera on a drone. This is the main reason I bought this drone. Now these next two stats are kind of important because it shows the flexibility of the new drone. The way it stands straight out of the box if you shoot in 4K or 1080p is you have a 70 degree angle of view with the new drone and the other one was 66. So pretty close. But the new drone has the flexibility that if you shoot in 4K HQ or high quality, it crops in to make a 55 degree angle of view. So it's almost like a zoom lens. So you don't have to be as close to your subject, but the camera will make it look like you're closer than you really are, which is great. Gives you some flexibility. 70 degree angle of view if you want those wide landscape shots, or if you're trying to zoom in on something, you shoot in 4K HQ, and now you have a 55 degree angle. So that's pretty cool. Here's another feature that really gets us excited in the video world. The new camera shoots in either 8-bit or 10-bit, you choose. The old camera only shot in 8-bit. Now, what does that really mean for you? It means the new camera can capture 1 billion different color variations, and the old one only did 16 million. I mean, I can't even think of a billion colors. I didn't know there were a billion colors, but they're out there somewhere. And now, if you want to color correct, you have all the palette in the world to work with. And speaking of color grading your footage, the next thing is really important for getting the best dynamic range. The new camera uses D-Log M, which allows you to keep the details in the shadows and in the highlights so that when you color correct later, all that detail is still there for you to use without it being crushed down too much at the low end or overexposed on the high end. It's something that colorists love to have. The old drone used is something called Cinelike D, which wasn't quite as good. I think you lost a couple of dynamic range levels. So for all of you that are not video nerds like me and you just want to know the specs, what does it cost, how long does it fly and all that stuff, it's coming up. But just keep in mind that the main point about this drone is that the new drone has what would be considered a professional grade camera on it and the old drone was more like a flying GoPro. If that makes any sense to you. So let's get on to the normal specs that everybody cares about. The first thing that'll probably take your breath away is the price. The new drone costs $1,449 US. And the old Mavic Pro when it came out was $9.99. I see it on sale in DJI, I think right now on sale for $8.99 now that the new drone's out. So it's certainly cheaper. So if you don't need a more professional grade camera, that might be the way to go. But yeah. Oh, another thing to keep in mind about the price though, DJI when they quote that price is including taxes and shipping, which is rare. So that price is the price right to your home. Keep in mind those base prices are just for one battery and I think you get one pair of spare props. Uh, so you probably want to invest in that Flymar package I showed you at the beginning because that gives you two additional batteries, extra props, a better charging system so you can put all four batteries on at once and it charges them in sequence, and a carrying bag if that's what you need. But it's probably worth it if you're going to buy all that stuff anyway, and I highly suggest if you're going to fly a drone like this that you have extra batteries because these batteries take a while to charge. Let's just throw up the specs and features right now and I'll go through them and I'll talk about the ones that are important and the other ones we'll just breeze over. First of all, the engines have been improved. There's a new brushless motor and a new electronic speed controller in these new engines, which makes it fly longer, 31 minutes versus 27 minutes, and fly faster, 45 miles per hour or 72 kilometers an hour, versus the old drone at 40 miles per hour. And I noticed it firsthand when I flew for my very first time over to the pond. You're gonna see uh, at the end of this video, 
When I was flying over and back with the new drone, I was getting a constant 27 miles per hour when I was not in sport mode, in regular mode. And with the other old Mavic Pro, I was getting anywhere between 16 and 19 miles per hour based on probably whether I was flying into the slight breeze we had or with it, but it never got above 19 miles per hour in regular mode. So there's a substantial difference, which is important when you're trying to fly to something a little bit further away, film it, and then get back with all, of it, all in one battery. So the speed to get there and speed to get back is actually a huge asset. So transmission. The new one has OcuSync 2 versus the original OcuSync 1 on the uh, original Mavic, and that's great in two ways. It has a lot further range, so you don't lose signal if you get behind trees or behind a building or behind something where it's kind of blocking your signal. This new OcuSync seems to just power right through it. I didn't drop at all when I was flying my Mavic 2. Another thing that comes with this new OcuSync 2 is it actually broadcasts it to your phone, which you're using as your display, in 1080p, as opposed to the old OcuSync used to transmit in 720p. So when you're looking at it, it looks crystal clear. And the good thing about that is it's going on your phone, it's saving it to your phone. So if you want to instantly send that up to some sort of social media, like Instagram or whatever, you got a top quality 1080p image right to your phone as you're flying. So flight range is improved as well. You're going 8,000 meters is the top farthest range that the drone will go. The old one was 7,000 meters. It's kind of a moot point because you really never fly that far anyway, but you know, it's there if you need it. Weight, it's a bigger and heavier drone. It's got bigger dimensions. When you lift it, it feels noticeably heavier. Mostly I think it's because of the bigger battery and we'll talk about that in a second, but it weighs two pounds versus the old one, old one weighs 1 1.6 pounds. The battery is noticeably larger, although when you look at the milliamp hours, the new battery is 3850 and the old battery is 3830, so that's a negligible difference. So they should be almost the same size, but the battery on the new drone is much bigger, noticeably bigger. So I'm guessing it's because it's now a four cell battery and the old one was the three cell battery. So it gives you longer life, longer flight time, maybe more boost for more speed with those new motors. Anyways, it's just better. So another thing I wanted to mention is these new props that have on it are quieter. That plus the new motors seem to be quieter. So when you measure the sound of the new drone, it comes in around 71 decibels and the old drone was 78 decibels. Another thing about it is the new drone is not only quieter, but it is a nicer sound. It's a deeper, kind of richer sound as opposed to the older drone had a more high pitched whine, almost like bees, a big swarm of bees were flying above you. And people tended to notice that sound more than the low pitch uh, drone sound that comes out of it now. Most importantly is this new six omnidirectional uh, avoidance sensors. So what it does is it has sensors on every side, top, bottom, right, left, back, front. The old drone only had sensors on the front and the bottom. So obstacle avoidance is much improved and we'll talk about that later. It's definitely something I'm going to do a lot of testing on on this channel in the future and I'll bring it to you. So that's super exciting. So just to summarize, Obstacle avoidance on all sides, so you shouldn't crash. Now, one caveat there. These two side sensors, for some bizarre reason, only turn on when you're in tripod mode or when you're in object tracking mode. And we'll talk about object tracking in a second. For some reason, when you're flying manually, when you're actually flying it yourself, all the sensors are on except for the two side ones. Don't ask me why, that doesn't seem to make sense to me. But if you start doing object tracking where the drone's gonna fly for itself, as you say, you know, highlight a car driving down a road, it starts following the car, it'll turn those sensors on, the side sensors, so that if it tries to turn sideways to track something, it doesn't accidentally turn go sideways into a tree. Don't know why they wouldn't just leave that on all the time. Maybe that'll come in a firmware update in the future. The other thing I'm hoping that comes up in a firmware update in the future is this beautiful camera, Hasselblad. I hadn't heard of it before I started watching reviews, but Hasselblad is a Swedish company that makes high-end cameras. Supposedly these cameras are so expensive, some people say buying a Hasselblad is like buying a small car, that's how expensive it is. So I thought, how the heck did DJI ever afford to get a Hasselblad camera on a drone? Well, found out that DJI actually bought a controlling interest in Hasselblad. And so therefore they obviously went to their engineers and said, build us a drone camera, that's good. So that's what they've done. And they've kept the price reasonable. Now there is another DJI drone Mavic came out at the exact same time. It's called the Mavic Zoom, the Mavic 2 Zoom. And it's the same exact camera as this one, except for they put a zoom feature on it. This one's a static um, camera. It doesn't change zoom. It can't change aperture. It's just set like a GoPro. You just turn it on and go. You can't do anything with it. 
There were two versions. The zoom has that same camera, but with a zoom lens on it, so you could manually zoom in and out, which is a pretty cool feature. But I was thinking, I don't want to buy a drone that has the exact same camera. So I wanted to buy a drone that had a better camera. Now, the only thing that I think it should have that it doesn't have is it doesn't shoot 4K at 60 frames per second, even though the Phantom 4 Pro also has the one inch sensor and it can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second. The conspiracy person in me thinks that they actually dialed down this camera from what it can do. I'm thinking this probably had the ability to shoot 60 frames per second, but then why would you buy a Phantom 4 Pro if that feature was there? This camera and this drone is better in every way. It's compact, you can fold it, you can take it with you, you can throw it in your backpack, go hiking, take your drone with you. You can't really easily do that with a Phantom 4 Pro because the thing's huge, especially if you put it in a protective case. So maybe what they're doing is they didn't want to totally cannibalize their Phantom series by putting uh, 4K 60 frames per second on this drone. So what they did is said, let's just dial it back to 30. Now, if you really want 60 to get that, you know, buttery smooth, slow motion, if you drop it down to 2.7K instead of 4K footage, you can then jump up to 60 frames per second. And if you're shooting at 1080p, this shoots at 120 frames per second. So it'll give you that really ultra slow-mo uh, view. So that's, it's still good. I mean, if you really need 60, you just have to drop it down to 2.7. When the Phantom 5 comes out and it starts shooting things in even higher resolutions and higher speeds, maybe they'll come up with the firmware update and say, hey, surprise, we can now shoot 60 frames per second with this. Who knows? I can't wait to get out and fly it. I want to show you all the different features. Actor track is my most exciting thing. I've watched uh, reviews where these people are running in between trees. This thing's following them. It actually will even go underneath branches to follow you through uh, forested areas, stuff like that, super exciting. This drone's tracking was the type that the minute you went behind a tree, even just a fairly skinny tree, if you went in behind a tree and went behind it and could, they couldn't see you for a split second, you came out the other side, it wasn't smart enough to anticipate you were gonna come out the other side. This one anticipates it. It's a new software, artificial intelligence. So if you go behind a tree or a bush, it'll go. If you came in this way, it's, you must be coming out that way. It assumes you're not going to do a 180 behind the tree and go back out the other way. So what happens is when it loses sight of you, it starts deciding that where it should, you should come out and then it's able to track you. So that is pretty slick. And I've watched reviews of it and it seems to work pretty well. I mean, it's not perfect and there's probably still some firmware updates that'll come that'll make it better. I've seen there's a drone on the market. I don't remember the name of it. I'll put the name of the description on the screen that has unbelievable tracking. Like, People are sprinting through forests and the things weaving in and out of trees to follow them. That is next level. This doesn't have that yet. It has all the sensors and features that should be able to do that. It just doesn't seem to have the intelligence, the artificial intelligence built in, but that can always change with a firmware update. Anyways, we have so much to cover. I'm so excited to get it out there and try cinematic 4K smooth footage and with this new Hasselblad camera. So stay tuned. Also, this is on Cruising Off Duty and my Average Tech Fan channel. I went out to my patrons and my Facebook people and I said, look, I have this new drone. I'm gonna be super excited to show, showcase it. Do you want me to keep some of this on Cruising Off Duty or do you want me to just put it all on this new channel called Average Tech Fan? And everybody to a person said, no, we want it on Cruising Off Duty because we enjoyed your Mavic, original Mavic Pro. Uh, reviews when you first came out with that drone and we want to see it again. I'm hoping eventually people will migrate over to the average tech fan because as this thing gets a little older and I'm starting to talk about more nuanced things like oh a new firmware update came out or a new whatever feature has just been added to the to the menus that probably won't be put on cruising off duty once this is no longer the hot topic about how this is going to prove my channel the minor details will probably only be on average tech fan so I'll put the link for that channel down below uh, and hopefully you'll subscribe there as well. If you're into Mavic 2 Pros and you want to know the nitty gritty stuff, that's the channel to follow. Okay, clearly I'm really looking forward to shooting 4K footage. And one of the things I'm looking forward to doing is object tracking. Like if I'm sailing my sailboat, it'd be nice to just point at my sailboat, say track me. And I, as I'm moving, so is the drone and I don't have to fly at the same time. So here's some examples of me just randomly picking cars. And it's kind of cool. Uh, the drone recognizes a car, it recognizes things that it should track. So there'll be little green, green buttons on top of cars and you just poke the button and say, yeah, track that and it follows. Now, clearly this black car is going way too fast for my drone and it, it takes off and eventually the drone loses it. But it's funny, I noticed the drone actually goes up 
as the car got further away, it started raising to the maximum elevation and then stopped. Uh, yeah, so that's one thing I didn't expect, that the drone would actually fly higher and higher as uh, it got the object got further and further away, but that's what happened. Here again is another case where I picked this black car and, and it just started taking off on my drone. The drone was maxing out at 27 miles per hour because I wasn't in sport mode. So clearly these cars are traveling faster than 27 miles per hour because it kept losing the drone. But yeah, if I go to sport mode, it should go up to 45 miles per hour, which would make it a little easier to keep track. But uh, yeah, so I went into the residential streets after this because these cars are just going way too fast. Here is a good case of where a car went behind trees and the drone was able to anticipate where it was going to come out. It's almost, it's if it's momentary, it'll still follow it. So the car goes behind a tree here and it loses it for a millisecond and it catches it again, kind of gets a little bit behind there. And then yeah, this person turned into the driveway really soon. So it wasn't much of a track, but it did go behind a tree. And as long as it goes behind a tree for a short amount of time, it seems to work. It's not perfect though, because here's a case where I'm tracking a car and it ends up going behind the trees for just a little bit too long and it lost it because of that. So as you can see, it's tracking the car perfectly. I'm a little bit higher, I'm a little bit further back when I started tracking this car. Well, it goes a little bit behind that tree. Then it goes behind even more trees that kind of is trying to keep up and then it sort of loses it for too long and then the drone gets confused and then stops tracking. This is by far the best example of tracking because the car was actually coming towards the drone. So the drone backs up. And then as the car still tries to go underneath the drone, the drone continues to back up and it actually starts to turn and pivot. It does an amazing job of following this car. Keep in mind my original Mavic Pro could not do this because it didn't have sensors out the sides and back. This one does, so it doesn't have a problem backing up because it knows it can't run into anything. It knows if there's an obstacle in the way. My Mavic Pro before would only go forward. If, it went, if something came towards it, it could not back up. So this is new for me. Then the car starts pulling away. And since we're on residential streets, these cars aren't going fast enough to outrun my drone. Now in future episodes, I want to try more advanced stuff like have it follow me as I walk through a, a wooded trail or something, because this is fairly simple to follow moving cars, as long as they don't go behind trees for too long. But we'll do that in a future episode. Okay, the next thing I was able to do on my first night of flying is compare the two drones footage, like both being shot in 4K. This is the original Mavic Pro. Uh, it's okay. It's not bad, except you're gonna notice something. I'll just fast forward to where it happens. As soon as the camera has any angle that sort of faces the sun, you get some wicked lens flares. I mean, really bad lens flares. And I took my ND filter off because it was actually golden hour. It wasn't that bright, especially if you're facing away from the sun. But as you can see, when he starts to turn right about here, oh my God, look at all the lens flares. I mean, it's unusable. Um, anyways, maybe ND filters obviously would help, but then it's going to be even darker and uh, yeah it would be a problem for enough light getting into the camera with an nd filter on just as the sun is setting so here's footage from the mavic 2 pro this is set to just natural color and uh, everybody's sort of made comments about this when they do reviews the color scheme when it's just on natural is very warm so everything has a very saturated look to it Things look ultra green. I mean, things like lawns that aren't perfect when you fly over somebody's house, they look like they have a beautiful lush green lawn. So I think it's a get bit exaggerating on the colors. Uh, what I will probably do in the future is I will shoot in that D log, very, very flat profile, and then I'll just add my own color uh, in post. But yeah, happy with the quality and it's pretty damn smooth. And here is me flying the Mavic 2 Pro facing the sun. And as you saw before, the Mavic Pro had all sorts of lens flares. This one's not bad. I don't really see any bad lens flares. And I'm flying the exact same route over the exact same marsh facing the exact same sun. So uh, yeah, and there's no ND filters on this drone as well. I am getting them in the future. And when I do, I will put them on. We'll do episodes about you know the quality difference with ND filters, especially on bright days versus no ND filter. Uh, yeah. So generally, for my very first day flying, I was happy with the active tracking and I'm happy with the quality of the footage. So overall, definitely think this was a good investment for the channel. It's definitely gonna up the cinematic quality. So leave your comments below. Let me know what you think of the footage. Keep in mind, this is my first day flying, so I haven't changed any of the settings. Everything's straight out of the box. I definitely can probably improve things by uh, tweaking some settings here and there, maybe bring up the sharpness a bit, bring down the saturation, of course, a bit because that green is ultra green. So anyways, that's it for now. Hopefully you enjoy it. If so, give the episode a thumbs up. Also, make sure you go over and subscribe to the Average Tech Fan because in the future, all the minor updates that'll come along about the Mavic 2 Pro will probably be done only on that channel. 
And until next time, even though I'm flying a drone, I'm going to say safe cruising. You can still cruise a drone, right? Yeah, so it still works. Oh, and Postscript, as everybody's probably told you if you've been watching other reviews, the return to home feature on this new Mavic 2 Pro sucks. As you can see, I took off from that orange circle and the drone is gonna try and land in my neighbor's backyard. So that's not good. And my regular Mavic Pro hit perfectly back on the H. So yeah, there better be a firmware update to improve that because I don't want my drone landing in somebody else's backyard. Talk to you next time.